Hello, friends. Welcome to episode three of our podcast, Kids Explorers. We're so excited that you're joining us on our journey to explore and discover new things. You might remember that in our last episode, we explored Daniel's favorite topic, Norse mythology. We explored gods and some sneaky deals they made with giants. Well, this week, we will explore an extinct animal that we're all curious about. Isabella, do you remember the name of this animal? Yes, how could I forget the Tasmanian tiger? Isabella, did you know that the Tasmanian tiger also goes by a different name, the thylacine? Those are pretty good names. I hope the Tasmanian tiger looks as cool as it sounds. Unfortunately, we cannot see this animal in person. The Tasmanian tiger is an extinct animal. What does extinct mean? Extinct means that this animal no longer exists. There could be different reasons why an animal becomes extinct. That's true. There are quite a few reasons, but unfortunately, some are the result of human action. For an example, when people build things like houses, buildings, and roads, they often have to take over land where animals live. This can cause the animals to lose their homes and food sources. Another reason is hunting. As we will learn today, animals often face extinction when they're overhunted by humans. And don't forget about pollution. Yes, pollution can be dangerous for animals. Pollution happens when our environment gets dirty from chemicals and different waste. This often hurts wild animals because it damages their home and food sources. These are just some of the causes which endanger animals' lives, but it's important to know them in order to know how we can protect animals and the environment. Have any other animals ever become extinct? Yes. Some of the most interesting animals that no longer exist are the Smilodon, saber-toothed tiger, dire wolves, woolly mammoth, and the megalodon. These are just a few, but many animals that used to live on Earth are no longer alive. So what happened to the Tasmanian tiger? I would also like to know this. Why don't we visit Professor Smarty Pants again so he can help us learn more about these animals? Well, actually, Professor Smarty Pants is heading to Australia today. We could go visit him before he leaves. Yes, to the car! That was a quick ride. And look, there's Professor. Oh, hi friends. So nice to see you. What brings you here today? Professor, we came here hoping that you could help us learn about an extinct animal called the Tasmanian tiger. What a coincidence! You won't believe it, but I'm actually flying out to Australia today to join a team of scientists on an expedition to search for information about the Tasmanian tiger. Professor, what does expedition mean? Expedition means a trip for a scientific purpose. In our case, we are going there to explore more about the Tasmanian tiger's habitat, diet, and so much more. That's really interesting, and those are actually some of the things we want to learn about this animal. Great! Do you guys want to join me and my team on our trip to Tasmania? Tasmania is an island in Australia where we will be able to find the most information about these amazing animals, because that is where they last live. Of course! to the airport. Oh my gosh, that was another long flight. It really was. Australia is super far from Canada. It sure is. But it's also beautiful here. Just take a look at all these green mountains and the beautiful ocean all around. Now, just imagine that 100 years ago, Tasmanian tigers walked on this exact spot. This was their natural habitat where they hunted and lived. What does habitat mean? Habitat is a place where an animal lives and makes a home. If an animal lives in a specific area, it means that they can find food and shelter in that place, which makes it a good habitat for them. 
That means that the Tasmanian tigers could find all those things on this land. This island was a perfect place for the Tasmanian tigers, but they also lived in New Guinea and in the main island of Australia. In those places, they often choose to live in forests, grasslands, and wetlands. That is where they could be best disguised. How? Well, Tasmanian tigers had light brown fur with black tiger-like stripes on its tail, going halfway up their backs. They were not tall, but were about 130 centimeters in length, with an extra 60 centimeter tail. In these places, they camouflage really well and blended in with nature. As you can see, there are tall plants all around, as well as forests which surround us. These are perfect places for the Tasmanian tigers to go unnoticed, which protected them from predators and made it easier for them to hunt and attack their prey. That's almost like being invisible, Professor. I wonder, were the Tasmanian tigers carnivores? Wait, what does carnivores mean? Carnivores are animals that eat mainly meat or other animals. This is different from herbivores, who eat only plants, and omnivores, who eat a mixed diet of both plants and meat. That's right. The Tasmanian tiger's diet consisted mainly of animals like small rodents, such as mice, rats, and even some birds. But most likely, they did not eat animals larger than a possum. Professor, is it true that the Tasmanian tiger was the largest marsupial carnivore before it became extinct? Yes. Hold on. The Tasmanian tigers were marsupials. Does that mean that they were an animal that carried their babies in a pouch? Yes, marsupials are animals that give birth to tiny babies. Once the baby is born, it stays in a little pouch on their mom until they are old enough to be more independent. A pouch is like a pocket on the marsupial's body. This is the place where the tiny babies live while they are completely dependent on their mom for food, protection, and warmth. Can you guys think of any other marsupials we learned about? How about kangaroos, koalas, and Tasmanian devils? And the possums. They're the only marsupial animals in Canada. I forgot about them. They often visit us in our backyard. Their pocket is so convenient to carry things in. Like a phone, my dad would be jealous. Just joking. That's all true. Good for you guys. And while some of the animals you mentioned have a pouch on the front of their stomachs, a four-legged marsupial like the Tasmanian tiger actually had a pouch at the back of their bodies, meaning that their little baby, which is called a joey, was facing backwards. That's so cool. Professor, but I still don't understand it. From everything you've told us so far, there was no reason for the Tasmanian tiger to become extinct. Their extinction is actually connected to their diet. What do you mean? Around the late 1800, beginning of 1900, some people from Europe moved to Australia and chose to settle in Tasmania. As you can see by looking around, this area is quite good for farming. Some of the Europeans who came decided to farm sheep here in order to produce wool. They also brought other animals, such as chickens, dogs, and other small animals. The problem started when the farmers began to notice that some of their sheep were attacked and eaten. They all assumed that the only animal capable of doing that was the Tasmanian tiger. I heard that even before they became extinct, the Tasmanian tigers were endangered because of things like diseases, loss of habitat, and competition for food. They often competed for the same food as some other animals in the area, for example, the wild dogs. Interesting. Professor, is this why the government put a bounty on the Tasmanian tigers? What does bounty mean? In order to protect the farm animals from the Tasmanian tigers, the government encouraged and paid people to hunt the Tasmanian tigers. Everyone was certain that the Tasmanian tigers were dangerous to the farm animals, and instead of recognizing the damage that they were causing by overhunting them, they actively caused these animals to become extinct. That's so sad. 
I'm sure there could have been other ways of protecting the sheep other than by hunting the Tasmanian tigers. Well, that's just it. Thankfully, scientists kept some of the bones of the Tasmanian tigers to be studied. The scientists came to the conclusion that this animal's jaws was too weak to kill an animal that was much larger than it was. In fact, the largest Tasmanian tigers probably weighed about 30 kilo. This is basically the size of a big dog. A sheep easily weighs twice that, if not more. But how is that possible? I heard that the Tasmanian tiger had the largest jaw of any other mammal. I think that even though their mouth opened so wide, it did not make the bite strong. Because the animal was not a very large animal, the jaw was also quite weak. This means that the sheep must have been eaten by another animal, maybe even some wild dogs. But if the Tasmanian tiger didn't eat the sheep, then why were they hunted? I think that the government and people just did not understand this amazing animal. By the time they started to realize that the Tasmanian tigers were not a threat to farm animals, there were very few of them left. In fact, they kept a few of these animals in a zoo, and when the last one died, the mayor said he would pay anyone who could bring a new Tasmanian tiger to the zoo for an exhibition, but sadly, there were none left in the wild. Are you talking about Benjamin, the last Tasmanian tiger? Yes, I am. I read all about him, which is why I became interested in the Tasmanian tiger. Benjamin was the last Tasmanian tiger held in captivity in the Hobart Zoo in Tasmania. He was also the last Tasmanian tiger recorded to be living. He was brought to the zoo once the government realized that there were very few Tasmanian tigers left in the wild. Sadly, since he died in 1936, there have been no official sightings of other Tasmanian tigers. Professor, is it true that the Tasmanian tiger was the largest marsupial carnivore before it became extinct? Yes, there have been several reports of sightings, but unfortunately, none were proven. We cannot say for certain that there are no Tasmanian tigers left in the world, but Unfortunately, we have not seen any clear evidence to show that they are still around. Either they really are extinct or their numbers are very few and they are terrific at hiding. I also read that even though the last known Tasmanian tiger died in 1936, this animal was not declared extinct until the year 1986. It takes 50 years of no sightings of an animal for them to be declared extinct. But with what you just said, I guess there's no way to know for absolute certain that this animal will never be seen again in the wild. I have a question. Is the Tasmanian tiger related to tigers? I love this question. The name makes it sound like it, but actually they're a completely different animal. They are not related to big cats or to wild dogs. They are most similar to the Tasmanian devil, who by the way also has a very big jaw. Hey guys, I have a joke for you. Why didn't the bunny get a job as a marsupial? Why? Because he wasn't qualified. Get it? Qualified? Ha <laughs> ha, <laughs> very funny. Professor, thank you so much for teaching us all about the Tasmanian tiger. We learned so much today. My pleasure. But before you leave, I wanted to introduce you to my new student, kid scientist Maxim. He actually had a suggestion for you guys. Hey friends, thanks for joining us in Australia. My name is Maxim. I was hoping you guys can explore the topic of tsunamis next week. Professor Smarty Pants and I have been researching this topic and it would be great if we could pass on our knowledge to others. That's an awesome topic. We would love to explore it next time. Thank you so much for the suggestion, Kid Scientist Maxim. We will be happy to learn about it. Daniel and Isabella, I think it's time for us to go home. Professor and his team still have a lot of research to do. We will see him again next week. Thank you, Professor. Until next week, to the airport!
Whoa, another long flight. That was a really interesting trip. I'm so happy I got to see where Tasmanian tigers lived. It made me feel more connected to them. Me too. They lived in beautiful places. I also love kid scientist Maxim suggestion for next week. I can't wait to dig in and explore the topic of tsunamis. Yes, his suggestion was definitely an awesome one. I'm excited to explore it next week. Friends, join us again next week as we learn about tsunamis. We hope you liked today's episode. Please share our podcast with all your friends who you think would like to join us on our explorations. We will be happy to hear your feedback and suggestions for future episodes. In the meantime, if you liked our podcast today, we will be so excited if you could give us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or any other platform you listen to us on. It will mean so much to us and will help our podcast grow and reach more children. And this is it, the end of our third episode. Thank you all. Until next week, goodbye.